Hello, my name is Karen Stoltzner. I'm a researcher and author with a PhD in linguistics. In recent months, I wrote an article for a Scientific American Mind blog in which I spoke about sexual harassment that I'd endured from a male colleague for several years. I did this to highlight the wide problem of sexual harassment in the workplace for women. You did it to highlight the problems of sexual harassment in the workplace? Yeah, sure you did. I'm sure the money Karen Stoles now has been raking in is just a happy accident based in no small part on her making her appeal directly to the dumbest white people in the room. Karen Stoles now has done a masterful job of turning what was a personal little vendetta against her ex-lover Ben Radford, where she may have aspired to little more than getting Radford in Dutch with his boss and making him persona non grata at the skeptical conferences they frequent, or create a common enemy so she and Baxter could take a much-needed respite from biting, breaking the furniture, and generally going to bed angry or arrested into a sweeping crusade on behalf of all women. Funny how it works that way, isn't it? A guy at a conference asked a chick who was drinking until 4 a.m. to go for coffee and suddenly the dumbest white people in the room go straight to DEFCON 1 and all sorts of draconian lockdown measures have to be put in place to protect people from stuff that has nothing to do with asking a drunk chick to have coffee. All these incidents become the Malibu Barbie Dreamhouse version of the Reichstag fire and the dumbest white people in the room who, for reasons of dementia, poor language skills, or drinking straight from the bottle, call themselves skeptics and free thinkers, well, they start running around flip-flops flapping, breaking windows, and invading Czechoslovakia because one of them saw a t-shirt they don't like. In her quest for revenge money, Karen Stolz now is standing on the shoulders of giant con artists who have beaten the path so well that she could follow it at a conference in the dark at 4 a.m. with the blood alcohol level of a two-headed fetus. But who could have predicted that a poster girl for partner violence and creative repurposing of old emails, whose crusade should have begun and ended with making sure Ben Radford was never comfortable enough with her being in another state to own a pet bunny, would have been turned into the dumbest white people in the room's version of Rosa Parks? That takes a special kind of skepticism. The kind of skepticism that demands you accept, without question, a question-begging formulation such as believe the victim, which so assumes what it should be proving, that the vestigial skeptical parts of their brains packed their bags and dropped a rope ladder from their ears long ago. Now, in an attempt to dig into the big bank of revenge yet again, Karen Stolls now posted this little bit of information on her Indiegogo e-begging page. She writes, My harasser continues to try to spread false information about me while demonstrating his harassment. He has recruited the help of a hate group to help spread his word, a voice for men. They claim now that this campaign is a violation of Indiegogo's terms. It is not. They claim that I am planning to just pocket this money. I am not. They claim that my insurance is covering my costs, so this money is fraudulently requested. Not true. My harasser was clever in his lawsuit and included things that my insurance could not cover, like claims of fraud. These are the same techniques of silencing the victim that many of us have encountered and suffered through. I will no longer be silent. My day in court is coming. So let's go through this in order. A voice for men isn't a hate site. The claim is that the Southern Poverty Law Center listed it as such. This is a lie propagated by Atheism Plus and Free Thought blogs way back when a bunch of Atheism Plusers under the direction of creepy bitter girl Sasha Wiley Shaw ripped down some of the Voice for Men's posters while waving around box cutters. Fortunately, a crack squadron of Atheism Plus mini true flying monkeys were scrambled to ensure that truth justice and a narrowly defined hermeneutics and social constructivist gender-based view of history could prevail. You guys come to your senses, become reasonable, become reasonable. 
Yeah. So I'm glad you're getting my picture. You can also get it off the website of Boys for Men. The decal, the address is on these posters. I really you didn't talk to me because you hate women. Thank you. Well, please don't project imputations of malice on me. I haven't I've said anything about you except please don't talk to me. And I'd that, like you to and respect under the direction of Uber Gruppenfuhrer and Junior Anti-Sex League leader Creepy Bitter Girl, the well-trained Atheism Plus winged primates went to work with box cutters, removing the offending pornographic, racist, sexist, misogynistic, cisgendered hate posters, working diligently despite having no previous experience in tool use, manual labor, or finishing anything they ever started. Stoltz now attributes to a voice for men the claim that her fundraiser is a violation of Indiegogo's terms of use. No, what they wrote was her fundraiser was arguably a violation of the terms of use. Arguably. You would think a doctor of lexical semantics would be able to wrap her head around that, but, you know, baby needs new shoes. The claim that Stoltz now aims to pocket the money is simply empirical induction. When Stoltz now started her Indiegogo fundraiser, her goal was set at $30,000, and any monies above that amount would be donated to a charity for victims of harassment. You know, the thing she's supposedly raising money for in the first place. As soon as it was apparent that she would exceed that goal by a wide margin, she grabbed the goalpost and ran with it off field and down the street. Goalpost? What goalpost? Now she'll use the extra money for her personal use, countersuing Ben Rad for, da for daring to sue her for defamation on the thin rationale that she defamed him. And the people who donated to her, thinking it was a win-win because the extra money would go to victims of harassment, they got to be unwitting accessories after the fact in Stoltz now's vendetta against a guy who didn't want as much relationship with her as she thought she had coming. And the insurance? How does she know her insurance won't cover her in a claim of fraud? unless she applied to her insurer and got turned down. When did she apply to her insurer to cover her legal expenses? When she first got when she was being sued by Ben Radford? When she was stringing Ben Radford along, negotiating a retraction she had no intention of honoring? Or did she apply to her insurer at the same time she was raising $60,000, half of which was now no longer going for the originally stated purpose, reneging on yet another promise because, well, what the hell? Now, for the big lie. Stoltz now claims my harasser continues to try to spread false information about me while demonstrating his harassment. He has recruited the help of a hate group to help spread his word, a voice for men. Now, we'll take it as a given that when she writes my harasser, she's referring to Ben Radford. Now, no, Karen, Ben Radford didn't enlist the aid of a voice for men. How do I know this? Because I did. Without Ben Radford's knowledge, encouragement, or endorsement. In fact, except for a National Capital Area Skeptics meeting where he spoke years ago, I've never met or spoken to Ben Radford. I did it all by myself. I'm just that kind of loose cannon rolling around the deck, breaking shit and making sure pirates can't have nice things. Now, the reason why I bring this up, aside from my obsessive need to get credit for the pure evil I perpetrate, is that you can learn a thing or two about Karen Stolls now. Aside from the fact that Karen Stolls now is now of a mind to blame everything on Ben Radford because, well, why stop now? There is no way she will retract her claim that Ben Radford put a voice for men up to writing an article on him and aiding and pumping a couple thousand dollars into his war chest. First, the whole I'm victimized by a hate group thing plays too well for the dumbest white people in the room. But more importantly, 
I think Karen Stolls now is psychologically incapable of correcting herself. She does no wrong. All wrongs are done to her. Most likely, Stolls now will just leave the claim up there. She may not repeat it, but now that it's out there, she can rely on the dumbest white people in the room to spread the falsehood for her. But what will really be interesting is if she's pressed on the matter. Then she will double down on her victim cred. A falsehood will be plastered over with another falsehood. And after all, a lie is a lonely thing crying out for company. Now that Karen Stolls now has been caught spreading falsehoods and defaming Ben Radford some more because, remember, I did it, pay attention to what she does, or, as telling, what she doesn't do to correct this error. Because therein lies the real Karen Stolls now. Ah, we not have to close the